After five months of traveling up and down the East Coast, visiting family, soaking up some Florida sunshine, and most recently dropping our RV off in Indiana for a couple of weeks, it's finally time to head back west and we could not be more excited. We've got 1,500 miles to drive over the next three days and an epic destination to take you to. So let's get going. So we just picked up the RV from Brinkley, dropped all our suitcases off in it, and this will be the first night that we've spent in it and over 12 nights after being out of it. We haven't even unpacked yet. Pretty excited to get somewhere and be back in the RV as you know how it is. There's just nothing like sleeping in your own bed. Our plan for today, or I guess this weekend, is to drive as far as we can west, basically. And when we get tired of driving later, this evening, we'll pull over to somewhere, rest up, I don't know, wherever we can find. Stay night, wake up, do it all over again. I don't have specific spots picked yet because when you're doing this many miles in a day, you don't know where you're gonna end up. We could hit traffic that you know delays us an hour. We've gotta stop and get fuel, probably stop and fill the water tank somewhere. So we're just gonna see where the road takes us. What an adventure. You ready for this long, long drive day, Maverick? He's tired of riding on already. Already. <laughs> the wind has picked up like crazy. We've definitely been feeling it on the road and feeling it as we get out of the truck to walk the dogs. Oh my gosh, it's cold. Hold on, Maverick, hold on. Hold on one second. Come on, buddy, sit. This wind is crazy, isn't it? It's cold. <laughs> so the wind's blowing pretty hard. It has been pushing on us pretty good, which is a good sign for how well the truck does, I guess. But it's windy. I think they're thirsty the way they're looking at you. <laughs> Maverick's being crazy. <laughs> Taking a quick break in the RV. We've been on the road for many hours, letting the dogs get something to drink. I'm sure you can hear Maverick slopping up the water right now. Okay, that's enough problem by Maverick. Bye, Maverick. <laughs> so we have been just over 300 miles since we set out this morning. I don't know how long it has technically taken us time-wise because we started, we probably got on the road hooked up and everything and set out around 10. I don't know how many time zones we've crossed now. So I don't know. It's 2.44 now. But is it actually 3.44? Yeah, I don't know. It feels like I've been driving longer than... <laughs> Maybe not. Three. I don't I know. I don't know. So, but we got, ooh, what, what do we got left? We got 1,200 miles left? Yeah. That's wow. like 1,200 miles. If you've been RVing for a while, you've probably gotten this question. What does your truck get miles per gallon wise? Well, I ain't here to answer that. But I will tell you one of the factors that nobody ever talks about for some reason, I've not heard one person talk about it, but it's how bad your miles per gallon becomes when it's windy. So typically I do get 10 to 12. I'm averaging, it says 7.9, but it's less than that because it's dropped me from, I think we were at like 18 before we hooked up to the RV today and it's dropped me all the way to 7.9 now. Um, the last time we filled up, it told me I had about 200 miles till empty. So the wind will kill your miles per gallon. And it's been extremely windy today. It's not really affected the driving so much, but I guess the truck and RV has been kind of fighting against the wind this entire trip and it's, it's showing on the fuel gauge. <laughs> You're ignoring Maverick? Huh? You're ignoring Maverick? What? You're ignoring Maverick? That's my boy. You're my boy. You're my boy. Something else that people don't often think about is the fuel costs of traveling from one side of the country to the other. I think when you RV, you know you're going to spend a lot on fuel because you're, you know, towing your house around. But it's usually spread out 
over time and your fuel cost is just higher. But when you have to go from like one side of the country to the other in a short amount of time, you really start to realize how much like fuel it costs to go somewhere. It's kind of like buying a plane ticket. We've already had to stop for fuel three times. It's been close to $100 each time. We're not halfway there, which means we're probably gonna spend, and we'll keep a tally and let you guys know how much it costs to drive 1,500 miles from the east to the west, but probably like $600-ish, just bam, just to get from one side to the other side. And it's not even all the way to the other side. We'll, we'll, tell, we'll show you where we're going once we get there, but it's not all the way to the other side. Hey, Victoria from the future here. Spoiler alert, we do eventually make it out west, but I am here to tell you about yet another mistake we made with RV life and let you know that eTrailer is today's sponsor and that if we had just checked with the experts on eTrailer.com, we would not have made this mistake. We get a lot of questions about the rack we use to carry our e-bikes on the back of the RV, and it turns out we're using the wrong one. <laughs> So we use the Hollywood Racks e-bike hitch and they do have an RV version, which we didn't know. And it does cost a bit more. And why though does it cost more? Is it just because they slapped the word RV on it and charged more? No, actually it's not. And the product experts at eTrailer.com had the answer for me. Now, I like our bike rack. I like how you can lock the bikes onto it. And it's held up fine so far. However, the RV specific one is made a little bit heavier duty. It's heavier and is just designed to withstand all the bouncing that you get from putting bikes on the back of a fifth wheel because the bike rack itself sits so much further behind the axles than it does on a truck and the suspension on fifth wheels is meant for towing not riding so you get a lot more bouncing back here and i do wish we had just asked you trailer first because we are probably going to need to upgrade our bike rack but anytime you have a question you can ask the product specialists on eTrailer.com you can chat them or look through the many many Q and A's they already have on their website because chances are somebody's already asked it and they've already answered which is exactly where I found out the information about our bike racks and how we have the wrong one so if you have any trailer truck towing needs make sure you check out eTrailer.com first but I'll also link the correct version of our bike rack in the description below. And now back to our journey to this beautiful but very windy place. So we just stopped to really let the dogs out, let them walk around and run around for a second and then top off our tank just because it's at a truck stop. This is the longest drive day we've ever had. Um, I don't know, I still feel pretty good. So we're going to keep going and just stop whenever I start to get tired. Uh, we're hoping to knock out all 1500 miles in two days, this being the first day. So hopefully tomorrow we'll make it. If not, we should only have a couple, two or three hours on Monday that we got to finish up. But fingers crossed for that two days. As you can see, it is dark outside now. Um, but I don't know, usually Craig, it gets dark. It's Craig's bedtime, but he's going strong. So I did lie to you, maybe. Maybe I lied to you about the three days. It might be only be a two-dayer. All right, we're turning in for the night. Craig is done. I'm tired. <laughs> it's like... It was uh, 12, at least 12 hours of driving, plus however many time zones we went through. And... That's my max. About 750 miles. We made it halfway. Halfway. Halfway, high five. I just gotta do it again tomorrow. <laughs> do it again tomorrow. We're at a Walmart in a parking lot. It's actually seems pretty quiet here blackout shades will be drawn and hopefully we can get a little bit of sleep wake up early yeah do it all again Five thirty a.m. and we are back on the road. The GPS is saying that if we just drive straight there, we'll get there at five fifteen p.m. So we could possibly make it by sunset, but obviously we're gonna have to add a couple hours to that for all our fuel stops and stopping all the dogs out. So I don't know. We'll be fighting the clock, but 
What do you think? You think we're gonna make it? No. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Vote in the comments. Are we making it in two days or is it gonna be three? This is our second time, first time filling up completely. First time we just topped it off, but I feel like we're making good progress even though we've stopped a few times now. Um, it's still saying 5.30 for arrival time, which is about 10 minutes more than what we started with. So not too terrible. We are gonna let the dogs out, let them eat something, drink something, take a little bit of a break. But the real reason we're really fighting the clock is because we're headed to a boondocking spot and I will not arrive at it after dark because I already know that it's got a pretty tight entrance. And so we'll see, we'll see. It's cold, it's cold, it's cold, it's cold, it's cold. <laughs> I don't know that it's gonna get much warmer actually. <laughs> oh no. Besides getting diesel fuel a bajillion times, it's been rather uneventful today. Making good time, traffic's not too bad. Um, we've gone through Texas into New Mexico, the landscape's starting to change, and it really looks like we could potentially beat the clock and make it there just as the sun is setting, but we still have to dump our tanks and fill, so we shall see. What you think? What you think? I think it's gonna be dark. We can't go. We cannot show up at this place in the dark. It would be too stressful, too stressful. I don't know, I mean, maybe not. I have a feeling we're just gonna chance it. So stay tuned for whatever's to come. Okay, I'm timing you, speed dump. It's not fair though, cause it's on the wrong side, so it doesn't count. We still don't have that much time though. Right. Hurry, hurry. So this is a one-way street and they do have the dump on what is the passenger side, which I don't think like almost anybody's dumping stuff is on that side. So I don't know why they set it up this way. Okay, can I help in any way? Uh. I guess actually we can put some water in it. Huh? We could put some water in it. Ooh, wait, step on it or something. <laughs> it looked like it was. <laughs> I don't even really need this sweater and scarf. It's so nice feeling outside right now. Glove looks heavy duty. It looks like some medical gloves or something. I have mechanic gloves. Oh. oh, they're too tight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna figure out how to get out of here. I don't know, flame rock is backing out. I know, because if all the lanes are filled up, I don't know that there's a way to get through. It's weird, it's, it's set up weird over there. Yeah. Okay, how long do you think it took you? 10 minutes. 10 and a half minutes. Dang. That's pretty fast. I just want to point out also that what was really nice when we got our Brinkley fixed is that, I don't know if you saw in our, one of our videos, we broke our sewer hose just driving down the road we ran something over and it came up and hit the sewer hose holder and broke it. Well, they just replaced it and gave us a new one for free, so that was really nice of them. You guys, I think we're gonna make it. Look, the sun, it's getting close, but we're only, how far away are we? Uh, 19 minutes, minutes. 19. 19 minutes away. We could, because when the sun goes down, it doesn't instantly get dark as much as like, I kind of think that in my head sometimes, but it doesn't. So I'm pretty nervous though, because I hope it's not packed. I hope we can find a good spot. We've actually been here before. And I think it has a pretty tough turn in. It so. does, it does. And I'm hoping that, I just hope we can find a spot because 
if we don't find a spot, then we're gonna be in trouble because it's gonna be dark. Okay, before we get there and show you where we are, I don't think I've mentioned where we're going yet. So guess in the comments if the scenery has been familiar to you and you know whereabouts we might be. It is out west. We are definitely back west. So the plan to get into this place, because it's a tight turn, I believe, if I remember correctly. Going from the right. Yeah, going from the right. Um, if you're crossing a lane, it's just pretty simple turn that way. But if there's no one behind me, since we have two lanes for us, I'll use the whole, this side of the road. If people are coming, we'll probably just go down further, do a U-turn and come back to turn in. There's left-hand tire. Blur, turn. Destination is on the is right. Is anybody coming? I don't uh -huh. see anybody. We're just making a wide, wide turn here. Oh, yeah. golly. Very slow turn. I forgot about that dip. I did too. Okay. We got this pole here on both sides. I'm gonna watch this side. Craig's got his driver's side. You're looking good. Yeah, you should be good over here. It's just that there's this big dip. Can you cut it pretty good that way? Because there's a, it's a big dip. You see how big of a difference it is? There we go. Come on. You're good on that side. Okay, we did it. Okay, it was even narrower than we, re we remember, but we made it through. <laughs> we did not hit a pole. Craig didn't want to trust me. I was letting him get a little close to the pole, but I didn't get him, let him get clo too close. Yeah, it looked like she was looking over there. Craig was looking. He don't know what he's talking about. Anyways, now we, oh my gosh. There's so many RVs here. Okay, let's see if we can find a spot. It's very busy. Whew, I feel a bit of out of boondocking practice here. I think we're looking pretty good. I'm not sure where to go. We're gonna get out, walk the dogs, and go look at the area, see if we can find a place near the water, because Victoria is bougie, even when we boondock, and it has to be the perfect spot. That's right. <laughs> okay, and then basically just pull straight in here. You can cut it to the passenger side a bit. Um, that's good right there, I think. Amazingly, we were like perfectly level and we're at Lake Holloman dispersed camping spot right outside White Sands National Park. It's a really, really cool spot with epic sunset views and we cannot wait to show you more of this spot. So a spot ended up opening up over here on the water so we moved the RV over here and we've had the best views since we moved. So if you were wondering how much fuel it took us to get here, it took us $603 to travel almost 1,500 miles from Indiana to New Mexico. If you're gonna do a trek like that, just be mindful that it could be similar to that, a little less, a little more, depending on the size of your rig. And wind. And the, the wind. So this Lake Holloman dispersed camping area, you can stay here for free, totally free for up to 14 nights with these amazing views right on this lake. It is big rig friendly, besides the fact that there is that tight turn that you guys already saw yeah, on the way stressful. in and that Caligar gate, but you can do it. You just have to be prepared for it and plan accordingly. This area is also right down the road from White Sands National Park, which is extremely nice. You can park here and stay for the 14 days and go to White Sands National Park while you're here. It's also got a town like 
10 minutes away, 10, 15 minutes away that has everything you can need. There's a Maverick right down the road that has a dump and water fill up. If you're running low on any of that stuff, you can either go dump and then fill up your water. Oh, it is also right next to an Air Force base. Ooh. So we've been getting to watch the like jets fly every day. But there is a, every now and then there's like some of them will break the sound barrier and it makes like this sonic boom sound and it shakes RV. I literally thought somebody just ran into our RV the other day. It was It was crazy. so loud. There is also a missile testing range near here. So we were like, was it a missile? But we looked it up and we're pretty sure just sonic booms going on. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of space out here. Most of the big rigs park towards the front because it gets a little bumpier the further you go back. Um, but it's really not too bad and this road just it keeps going on past another cattle guard gate and around the lake. Yeah, it's like a three and a half mile loop around the lake. Um, Craig would know he's been running yeah, it. Yeah, been running it. It's been killing me. But uh, there's a lot of spots all the way around the lake. It gets a lot more secluded though on the other side after you pass that second cattle guard. And you probably don't want to do that if you're in a big rig. Although we saw one yesterday. Yeah, we did. He made it through. So, he made it through. So I don't know, it's doable, but definitely small rig friendly back in there. Overall, we are really excited to be out west boondocking again. And if you like boondocking, if you're interested in it, make sure you click the subscribe button. Also click the subscribe button because it really does help our channel actually is why uh, we want you to do that. But we also have big plans, you know, to go to Alaska and we're going to be boondocking a lot there. However, before we ever even get to Alaska, we got a big boondocking adventure planned. So if this interests you, make sure you click the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you later. Thanks for joining us. Bye.